Hello. How are you doing? I've got my table and some stuff set up, not completely done. In the other room, I actually like to turn the music on, some classical music. Typically some classical harp music. Isn't all harp music classical? Well, most of it is anyway. Um, simplex Tricks of Product Photography. I'm actually setting up a semi-complex uh, product shot in the next room using my collapsible table. And I've got one room, well, I've got a half of one room that's uh, full of props and stuff that I actually use uh, for product photography. And everybody thinks it's about lighting, and that's half the truth. It's actually about lighting control. Um, you can blast anything with light and saturate the hell out of the shot. Some of the most amazing images that I've ever seen, whether it be people or products, are incorrectly lit. It's like, well, it's a beautiful composition, and it's nice and sharp, and depth of field's nice, and the image is well saturated, and it's processed really well, but there's no definition to the shot. There's no, there's no drama. Um, Seeing everything, too, is not good. I'm kind of use, use a crude analogy. You could take the most beautiful woman in the world and take, like, a completely nude shot. And it's like, well, you know, that's, that's too much. Don't want to see all that. I think, and of course I know this is a crude analogy, the most beautiful woman in the world is far more sexy looking wearing something, you know, covering, like, say, a nice piece of lingerie and a beautiful composition. You know, there's... There's a lot to be said for what the human mind fills in that the eyes don't necessarily want to see. The same is true of every type of photography. Um, everybody's so interested in HDR photography, and that's all well and fine. It is, of course, excessively overdone. Um, I don't want my highlights looking the same as my shadows, and I don't want everything perfectly lit. The best shots I've ever seen in the world, and this is subjective, but it is a generalized statement about everybody, and that uh, people do agree that you could take a perfect, beautiful, complex product photography shot and blast the shit out of it with light and everything. It's not, no shadows at all. It's like, well, that's nice, but it's flat, and it's uninteresting. Or I could actually add a honeycomb, you know, because everything is about control. It's kind of like having a thousand head of cattle you know, a farmer, and but he's got no fence. It's like, where's my cattle? Where's your cattle at? Well, they're out there somewhere. Well, where are they? I don't see them. Well, I don't know. I let them loose. Do you have a fence? No, I don't, but I let them loose. They're out there somewhere. They might be on Bob's land. You know, lighting is the same way. I mean, I, I've actually given uh, people uh, tips on this that are doing product photography, and less is more. And I'm not talking just about lighting, but actually the control of that lighting. Uh, some of the actual, I'm going to show you here in just a second, this is the really simple stuff that will make all the difference in the world and it is cheap as piss and you can make it yourself. The best product photographers that have ever lived, people like Dean Collins, who's now dead of cancer, you know, he has every, he had every piece of gear in the world at his fingertips, but when he did a really, really expensive product shot, he would design and use uh, DIY light mod controls for uh, confining the light. Um, every little shadow at different layers of light. And of course, the best shots are layered lighting. And of course, there's many ways to achieve layered lighting. I, I'm kind of lazy, and, uh, but it's also the smart way to work. I believe that uh, it's all about working smarter, not harder. You could kill yourself, you know, taking like 10 shots, like, well, I'm going to... I'm going to illuminate this part of the product here, you know, really, you know, okay, shot number one. And over here, yeah, there's shot number two. And I'm going to stick on a red filter over here. Let's just pretend there's a red filter, even though it's a red LED. Yeah, there we go. There's shot number three. Or, you know, since a lot of people don't think in terms of time, I could actually, and this is how I do 80% of the, of the complex uh, product uh, photos is in complete and total darkness. You know, I know where everything is. I'll have a little bit of light spilling around the corner, just enough that I could barely see what the hell is what, so I'm not, you know, stepping over or tripping over something. 
that's all I need. You know, stick the camera and the product shot I'm going to do tonight is with the uh, GFX uh, 50S on my foldable, collapsible tabletop that I use for product photography. So um, I'm going to do a, a bulb, okay, ISO 100, and uh, I'm going to do, I don't know if it's going to be three to five layers. One shot is going to be uh, through translucent material using this red LED. I actually love the place, and I've got every color imaginable. These are the little, uh, you can get these on eBay. These little uh, LEDs, battery-powered, watch-powered uh, LEDs, I'll place it under or behind something, and it'll actually give a kicker to a particular part of a product, or say, in my case tonight, the translucency of one part of the product. So like, I want to take advantage of that translucency, and I'm going to stick a red LED underneath there, and on my uh, bulb exposure. And of course, I always use my flash last, obviously so. I'm going to stick this red LED underneath there, and I know what to expect. It's going to be underneath there for 10 seconds before I move on to uh, my next shot, or I could actually do that at the same time. Uh, this is also the reason why I keep a pack of cigarettes. I don't smoke at all. Um, I'm going to use uh, some illumination to actually throw in some uh, a manifestation of the light in the particular product by just lighting up a cigarette and blowing it along the light stream of the particular product. Um, secondly, and uh, this is one of my favorite tools, they don't sell this anymore, but you can get all sorts of, these are really expensive. It's a uh, six-step six output, it's a Surefire LED, and this is the reason why I have like five packs of black straws. Um, this is one on the head of a LED bulb. You can actually see here they're bundled together across the center section. I'll actually use this, but not tonight. I just pulled this out. Um, I have a, in the other room there, I've, they're basically tin straws that are duct taped together, and I use this uh, for painting the product. And it's extremely tight confinement. This isn't like tin straws, but you get the, you get the gist. You know, I could paint the edge and give definition or paint the rim and get this, of course, not just the color. Everybody appreciates early morning or early evening or late evening lighting. And they think it's about the orange glow of the sun. Well, that's part of it, but most of it is the angled definition that is given to the architecture or the person or whatever the hell it is on the early morning, late evening lighting. And uh, by using these straws and a light source, I'm able to do that with the product. And lastly, and that's not this honeycomb grid. I've got a honeycomb grid at a steep angle. I'm going to try several different things and see which I like best. And use a honeycomb, a honeycomb which i got a honeycomb head, actually, a uh, reflector head uh, that's uh, on the head of uh, my uh, Godox 8200. Um, the black muslin is, uh, this actually, this isn't the muslin. The muslin's the end of it. I got a lot of different black cloths I use for product photography. I lay this down. I should have brought it over here. It's a piece of red lambskin. You can get all this stuff really cheaply on eBay. Like, a piece of uh, red lambskin that I've used endlessly for product shots, it, it gives really nice texture. It's just a, a piece of a rough edge lambskin that's been dyed blood red. I've got all sorts of stuff and uh, props like I uh, like this that I use uh, for product photography. It makes beautiful shots. The client is always happy. It's about layering the light. And like I said, I work in near total darkness. The only light I have is the faintest hint of light. What I do is I actually turn on one of these bulbs in this room, totally dark in the other room, and just enough light spilling over isn't affecting the exposure on the product shot, but it is enough for me to barely see what the hell is what, you know? It's like, I know that's there, I could barely make it out. And of course, once I start painting with the light and the straws, here's another snoot that I use. Actually, I often use this too with uh, my flashlight. However, not this time. This time I want really tight confinement of the light. I'll actually use this so there's no spillage of the light. I'll actually use this to, and of course, let me turn it up some here. I've got it on the lowest setting. Use this to illuminate my product. This isn't the product, of course. This is a tube I actually use also for uh, painting, uh, uh, painting the product. You know, to give it definition, uh, to actually raise and give definition to the subject. 
Everything is about shadow, mid-tones, and highlights and the transitions thereof. When someone blasts something with light and saturates the shot, it's like, well, that's finely exposed, but you're supposed to sculpt the light. The lighting ratio, I mean, where are the mid-tones? There are no mid-tones. The whole thing is now a mid-tone. So there is no mid-tones because it's all mid-tones. There's no speculars. There's no shadows. The mind fills in what is not seen. Mind always does. This is how a good storyteller works. I mean, no person, and this is how a photograph should be done, and this is where you should pay the, pay the hell attention. Have you ever read a good story where, you know, the first page, they give you the answer to what's on the last page? Like, you know, it turns out the chef did it. You know, he was the killer, you know, and this, you know, like, you know no one would read a story like that, would they? Where's the suspense? The shadows in the mind of the ultimate surprise ending you know the ending is supposed to be a surprise it's the same reason why you know uh, stark naked spread eagle nude photography even if it's the most beautiful person in the world it's it's not sexy it's like yeah that's too much i don't want to see all that you know i don't want to see you know i don't want to you know this is not anatomy 101 i don't want to see her you know I'm going to mention some, some naked lady parts. You know exactly what I gonna, was going to say. You know, I don't want to see that. You know, that's not exciting. That is, that of course is what we would call crude nude. You know, kind of like something that Larry Flint would do, right? This is too much information. Don't want to see that. You know, a tasteful nude is like, you know... You might see a nipple, but everything else is sex, you know, dressed nicely in lingerie. That's, that's nice. You know, everybody could appreciate. Well, that's, you know, this is, that's beautiful. That's, that's lovely. You know, don't even have to be any, any, nothing has to be seen. No nudity. I mean, just like nice lingerie. The hint of something through some semi-transparent lacy lingerie. You know, that's nice. The same applies from nude photography, and I'm only using that as an example because you know what the hell I'm talking about, to product photography. I've seen so much product photography, you see everything. You know, and if it's technical product photography where you want to see everything, that's a different type of product photography. If it's product photography where you're trying to sell a story and you're trying to sex it up a little bit, you know, get some mystery, some, some nuance, this is what defines the composition of product photography to entice someone to want to buy that product or stare into it. The mind will develop the image of what is in the shadows and not seen. Some of the coolest product photography I've ever seen, and I try to emulate, depending on what it is and what the client wants, because that's all that's important is what the client wants, is like only 30% of the product is illuminated. You know, there's a lot of shadows, and you know what's there, and your mind will paint the rest. Like, that's sexy. That's awesome product photography. But it's not about lighting. Well, sure it is. It is about lighting, but people use too much light. And people talk about power. I've got like eight studio strobes, professional studio strobes. People always wonder about how much, how much power because I got a lot more power. The best studio strobes, like the Einstein unit back here, and I got many of those, is the fact that you could dial it way the hell down. Way down! The issue with a lot of professional studio strobes is they've got too much power. And this, of course, is really like most product photography doesn't require studio strobes, unless it's a big product. Most products, is, you know, most products are like this. In my case, the product is this big. Um... Speed lights are more than enough. You don't need a studio strobe when you got, you're got you working at four feet with a product yay big or this big or, you know, this big. You don't need a studio strobe for that. There are advantages, however, especially if you want to give nice, soft, diffuse lighting and everything, which I'm not really a big fan thereof unless that's what the client wants and you want everything to be seen, no shadows at all. But, and you've seen that stuff. Um, Product-wise, for like Fujifilm, will have a picture of the camera um, in a uh, camera magazine, which nobody buys anymore. And there's hardly any shadows there. Everything's perfectly lit. You just want to see everything. You want to know everything about it. You don't want any shadows. You want everything to be perfectly lit. 
You know, you're trying to convey the maximum amount of information as possible so that someone buys that. If you're trying to sex it up, you know, you do some tight confinement of the light, you sex it up and you leave shadows, you know what's there, but you're looking at the form. Kind of like, uh, once again, I get back to the nude photo. You know, somebody that's laying half naked on the bed. You know, I don't want to see the dirty bits. And say, you know, you're just, you're skimming the curves, right? They're the sexiest shots you've ever seen. Um, where you're just skimming the curves. Most of the body is in shadows. You see the geometry of the body. Um, that's sexy. You're not blasted with like, BAM! Oh my God, I can see everything. I can count every hair and, you know, I could do, you know, there's a photo fitting of an anatomy class. I don't want to see all that. Doesn't matter how beautiful the person is. It's too much, you know, I don't want to see that. It's not good. Um, what other little stuff that I bring up here? Yeah, I've got tons of, uh, you know, I've got tons and tons of props. But most of them have to do with confinement, like these little LEDs I'll actually throw down. Honeycomb grids, straws, like I said, I got tons. You get these on eBay. These are five and three quarter jumbo, and they need to be black, okay? Black, black straws. I got another package over there. I got a package of these over there. I got a package of these over there. I, I use the hell out of black straws. You see, I've, I've got this, this is an LED head. I, I found these really cheap. They're actually daylight balanced heads. These are wonderful. I'll actually stick this in a wired head, screws in, of course, powerful, wonderful. Um, first, it's about lighting. Secondly, it's about lighting control. Um, once you got control, layering the light is pretty easy. You could teach yourself how to layer the light, you know, by failing over a night. It's like, first I'm going to illuminate this part, and then I'm going to illuminate this part, you know, with confinement, not just, you know, and then lastly, you know, I'm going to blast it um, with my studio strobe on this. I'm going to use my 8200 with a, uh, it's got a reflector head on it. Um, it's smaller than that with a honeycomb grid on it for a tight confinement and skim the surface to give a nice definition. There'll be plenty of shadows. My, the shot that I'm planning to do tonight should be about 40% shadows or more. It depends on, I'm going to do several different compositions that I've already constructed in my mind. It's like I want it to look this way, but this way also looks good, then I'll make the final decision. Ultimately, the final decision is up to the client. Um, but once you learn to do that, it doesn't take long to learn how to do that. I mean, you know, you, you'll... I love product photography. Tabletop, macro, product photography. I love painting with light. I love sitting there in basically 99% darkness, painting with light. Using straws, actually I use this on a, a strobe head. I just uh, made this out of a cardboard tube. You see the confinement that I got here? It's like, well, I don't want to light all of this. And this is, of course, not the product. Let's say this is the product. It's the lens. I only want to light the inside of this lip. Okay, well, I can do that here. I just skim it right, right here. It's avoiding reflection off the front element. Let's say if this were the product that were the lens. You know, I want nice tight confinement. I just want to paint the edge over here. Okay, great. Okay, I got too much shadow over here, but I got a silver knob over here I want to accentuate. Okay, I'm going to go over here and quickly flash it. I actually would have flashed it once. I just missed it. There we go. There we go. How hard is that? That's not hard. It's like, why do people find, you know, this is modern. And of course, you like I said, you could take 10 shots and combine them in Photoshop or Capture One and, and uh, use layers, use your layers uh, function. In uh, Photoshop, that's all well and wonderful. Um, too time consuming. You know, layering light for product photography is easy. You turn off all the lights, you just have enough to see by. Stick your camera and bulb on a tripod, as your base ISO, 100 or 50, whatever the hell it is, and start painting with light. Oh my God, you can do the best product photography just like that. All you have to do is just drop uh, your raw file into Lightroom or Photoshop or Capture One and uh, process it to your desire. And this, of course, is where great dynamic range comes in. You know, you can, and I'll add vignetting. I'll uh, raise my shadows up a little bit, depending. I was like, oh, that looks perfect. That's, that's so great. I love doing product photography with the GFX. Um, anyway, 
All this stuff is cheap on eBay. And of course, you know, uh, you got a fabric store. Here you go. I got all sorts of fabric. Like I said, I got one half of one room that is just full of props for product photography. Cheap stuff. Most of the stuff I made myself. You know, out of oddball weird things laying around. Because it's about lighting control. People say it's about lighting. I say no. It's about lighting control. You know? That's kind of like... Is, when you say photography is about lighting, that's like saying uh, marksmanship is about firepower. Well, if that were the case, then why don't you just have like a, a general electric minigun which spits out a bazillion rounds a minute with, you know, a blind person behind it. It's like, yeah, you got all the power in the world, but you got no control, no accuracy. It's not about lighting. It's about lighting control and confinement. Um, first, you have to have the power, but that's only step one. You know, you have all these steps up here. You need to sculpt your lighting ratios. You need to know where to set your midtones and your shadows and your highlights. I mean, that is everything. If you just blast everything with a BAM! Look, it's perfectly illuminated. No shadows, nothing. Yeah, the image is flat and shitty and BORING! If that's what the client wants, though, give it to him. Who gives a damn? Money is money. <laughs> but your images will look a lot better if you, you know, sculpt the lighting. Kind of like no one wants to see a total buck-naked image of the most beautiful woman in the world. It's like, <laughs> I don't want to see all that. That's not sexy at all. <laughs> Hashtag spread eagle is ugly. <laughs> did I say that out loud? I think I did. Thanks, girlfriend. Bye.